How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the channel where we create comics and manga. If this is your first time stopping by my YouTube channel, then I hope you can check out some of my other videos after you are finished watching this one. Joining me today is Vandal Marchin, an independent manga artist and fellow YouTuber. In today's video, we are going to be talking about good character design in comics and manga. This video is the long-awaited sequel to one of my most popular and oldest videos, how to make concept art, character turnarounds, and reference sheets for comics and manga. But before we jump into today's 10 tips, let's first hear a word from today's sponsor. This video is proudly brought to you by Wing Fox. Wing Fox is an online learning platform for artists of all skill levels. On Wing Fox, you can take general courses, master classes, and participate in workshops. Wing Fox instructors come from all over the world and are veterans in their respective industries. Wing Fox courses range from VFX to video game art to animation to environmental design. Today, I want to tell you about Wing Fox's course on character design. The course is called Character Design and Animation Elements and is taught by James Varib Kenich. James is a veteran animator and storyboard artist who has previously worked with Disney, 20th Century Fox, and Universal Studios. Hello, my name is James Varib Kenich, and I'm really excited about having this opportunity to share with you um, some of my experiences and a lot of knowledge that I've acquired over almost 40 years in this animation business and specifically here about character design and how to develop character design and, uh, and since then over almost 40 years I've been able to work on over 20 feature films plus 40 50 odd TV shows and specials um, all the way up into live-action films now recently uh, including Dawn of the Planet of the Apes my first feature film was Fox and the Hound, and uh, even though I worked on some shorts at Disney before that, um, it's, it's really a pleasure because I was taught in the sense that they felt like they were paying it forward to me, about the passion of the art. And so I try to do that with the people that I mentor or who I'm fortunate enough to be able to oversee and supervise and give it the pass on, so to speak, this same kind of excitement that I have, and I found in them, these old guys, which I'm now an old guy, and so give that sense of, of, of excitement. So today, as I mentioned, we're gonna get into character designing, which for some crazy reason, I came to love. And, uh, and, and it's been one of my highlights of what I do. Until March 25th, Wing Fox is currently hosting their Cherry Blossom Festival event. During this event, if you buy one online course, you get one free. You can also save 25% by using the discount code HS25. If you are interested in learning more about Wing Fox, please use the links in my description box below. Thank you again Wing Fox for supporting the creative community. Now let's get back to the video. So hey there guys, my name is Vandal. I'm a self-published manga artist and I make videos on how to make manga and really how to approach the overall process and mindset to the art form. Right now, I'm currently working on my next one shot called The Seizure, and I've also published my own one shot called Note, which was entered in the Shonen Jump Tezuka contest. So if you're interested in my work and want to know more about me, you can follow me at Vandal Marchin on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Character design to me is the visual manifestation of your character, the way you imagine them to be. That includes clothing and maybe other physical attributes, but also how their visual design is emblematic of their character and where they have been and how their personality might have even been before you got to know them as a character. So maybe how their clothes look, uh, reflecting like the environment they've been in, if that makes sense. In visual arts, character design is the creation of a character's aesthetic, personality, behavior, and overall visual appearance. Character designers create characters as a vehicle for storytelling. Every aspect of a character, such as shapes, color palettes, and details are chosen for a specific reason. The details of a character's personality often inform character designers on the visual attributes of a character. Principles such as color theory, shape language, and general psychology all help visual artists create an effective character design. Character design aims to make these characters engaging, visually stimulating, and memorable. So what I think makes good character designs is a lot of things. I think that it has to be impactful, it has to be unique, and it gives you that sense of idea of who that character is. And again, seeing what kind of person that they might be in the design that's made. It's really to get an idea of the character's character, but also it depends on the context of the story and how that relates to the context of the design. And to contrast that with bad design, I think bad design feels purposeless, like there's a lack of meaning, the character's design doesn't stand out or even feel unique to them or even the viewer. 
you don't really get to understand the subtext to the character because you don't really get to see their personality represented in their design. However, there are some instances where you can have designs that are meant to be the opposite of what was intended to be so you can subvert the reader's expectations. So it's varied in what makes design good or bad, but I think it comes down to intent. What did you want your character's design to do or what kind of impact did you want it to have on the reader or even the character itself? Good character design is all about clarity. Your character should appear distinct no matter how we see the character. Three components that make up good character design are silhouette, palette, and exaggeration. A sign of good character design is a character being recognizable solely from their silhouette. When creating a distinct character silhouette, it is important to have a solid understanding of shape language. Palette refers to a character designer's use of color. You should be selecting your colors carefully and with intent. A character with no color hierarchy or balance will end up distracting the audience rather than engaging them. It is important to try and use one color as the dominant color of the character and minimally using other colors to complement that color. Try to use colors that support each other rather than compete. Exaggeration utilizes specific characteristics to purposely bring out emotional and psychological responses from an audience to a character. These exaggerated features can be the difference between an audience perceiving a character as heroic or menacing. I think also character design is super important because people love how cool a character looks and how unique they are. They even have polls on, you know, your favorite characters and people will even cosplay and draw fan art of a character just on their looks alone. And it can really elevate how interested someone is in your world and in your story because the characters always the characters that are in your story are very important and once the reader has established a connection with them the sky is really the limit at that point edward from full metal alchemist is really one of my favorite designs i love the way his arms are emblematic of the story and what he's went through and it shows through and goes through the whole philosophy of the circular motion of the manga and anime it's just it's just perfect I really love Mugen from Samurai Champloo. I just feel everything about his character design just shows who he is, shows that badass side of him. I just really like that about him. Uh, in terms of video games, I really enjoy all of the character designs from the Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue franchise. I find that they're so unique and really their designs fit their personalities and it's just something that is awesomely amazing like you should just check them out they they all have like a philosophy through line with all of their designs and but they're also emblematic of the characters which just makes them fit each one of them Beastars and odd taxi are the first two series that come to my mind when i think of good character design in anime and manga both series feature a cast of characters with animal-like appearances the intention behind why these characters are animals is really well thought out and visually stimulating as we learn more about the characters from both series, it becomes more apparent why each character's personality and experiences is represented by a specific animal species. At first glance, both series may look like they are made for furries, but in reality they are very thought-provoking stories with meaningful, unique, and effective character design. All right, so one of the first ways that I love to design characters is research. So research is a great way to get an idea of how other artists create their characters and give you an idea of the character that you want to design. So if you don't have a solid idea or you need that extra imagery, you can definitely look at other artists for that. I like to make a Pinterest board or just a board of characters that I want that use inspiration for the character designs. You know, just look at other characters that you feel inspire the character that you want to make and then just put that all together it's a very important way to like you know just improve on your character design skills see how other artists do it and you can also incorporate that into your own designs so one thing that i think good character design has is a strong silhouette so when you take out all of the details can you recognize some of the key features to your character like their hair maybe their pose or even some accessories they might have but some good examples that I like to think about when you're making your silhouettes are, for example, when you take away all of the details from Goku, you can tell it's Goku by looking at maybe his hair mostly. And that unique hairstyle is something that really helped characters in your silhouette stand out. That's why you often see a lot of characters with unique hairstyles. Another would be like Ichigo from Bleach. He has this really huge sword and his big black kimono. When you take out all of the details, it's very easy to see that. 
Another tip I think is important is I think the sense to exaggerate your character's body types. This is one way to create a range of diverse characters. You can have some be short, tall, skinnier around. It'll allow you to play with the proportions and even create a varying sense of diversity in your world. I think in a series that is really good at doing this is One Piece. In a world where people have varying sizes and shapes, you have people who are fairies, fish, giants, all over the place, animal people. There's so much going on in this world it feels like they're adding so much more to the exaggeration of the proportions that can really help vary up your designs and make your world just so much more full iteration is important don't just go with your first drawing try you know working on a few more before just settling on that one that you liked and not just the first one that you did because this allows you to play around with your ideas and have potential ones if you want to change your character style later it's always good to make options try different hair clothes and styles and see what you might like from your drawing i know it can be time consuming but you know quick sketches that aren't very detailed can make that really easy and not as time consuming as making like a full-fledged drawing and a nice example that i have for that is like my hero's deku uh, he's really good because through the progression of the show his outfit has changed in very small ways the addition of his boots you know he has more arm gloves he has slight little changes to him but they're every time a different iteration on the same idea of his costume they're very slight changes but it's in a response also to the narrative change in the story, which is also something you can think about when designing your character, how they might look now versus how they might look later and see which ones you want to play with. So I think the design you make should in itself tell a story about the character. So giving two types of information to the reader. One should be about the character. What kind of person are they? How is it reflected in the clothes that they wear and their hairstyle? And the other is giving the idea of the world where in which they might look that way or due to what the world is that they're in and how they're affected by that. I think a great example of this idea of design for storytelling is Dr. Stone how the world shifts and the clothing of the characters do as well because now they're in the stone world they went from the human world to the stone world and their clothes reflect that but in that change in the world their expression of their design also fits their character in the world so you can take a look at how they look and act and it's emblematic of who they are and how their clothes and designs fit and shift into the world that they're in my first tip is going to be about color hierarchy Understanding color theory is essential for creating engaging character designs. Aside from knowing about primary and secondary colors, you need to understand the importance of color temperature, complementary colors, split complementary colors, monochromatic colors, analogous colors, and triadic colors. Certain colors convey different emotions and meanings. A character with an optimistic personality may have a brighter color palette versus a character who is pessimistic with a darker color palette. This light and dark color combination can be seen in Naruto with Naruto and Sasuke, in Devilman Crybaby with Akira and Ryo, and Death Note with Light and L. My second tip is going to be to know your target audience. The comic or manga's demographic will help determine the simplicity or complexity of the character's design. For example, in a series aimed at young boys, the designs might be flashy, vibrant, and made up of bold shapes. Some series that embody this well are Fairy Tale, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Hunter x Hunter. For an older demographic, character designs might have more details, a more muted color palette, and dynamic shading. Some series that embody this include Stein's Gate, Parasite the Maxim, and a Jin. My third tip is going to be about dynamic line art. Thick, soft, and round line art may suggest an approachable or cute character. Sharp, scratchy, and uneven lines may indicate a character is uneasy or erratic. A straight line, also known as a simple line, leads the eye quickly, while a curved line, also known as a detailed line, slows down the eye. An example of an approachable and friendly character with smooth line art is Marin from My Dress Up Darling. An example of an erratic character drawn with sharp and scratchy lines is Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. At the beginning of the series, his character is drawn with bold, clean, and round lines to showcase his innocence and optimism. His character slowly begins to be drawn with more scratchy, uneven lines to emphasize his unwavering determination to seek revenge on the world. My next tip is going to have to do with design consistency. If you are designing a character for a comic, manga, or webtoon, you should be prepared to draw your character over and over again. Nothing is worse than not being able to draw your character consistently. During the design phase, account for the complexity of your character. Remember, less can be more. Design your character in a few poses and from various angles. Make sure drawing your character design again and again isn't tedious. As a rule of thumb, you should probably avoid designs that have elaborate patterns on clothing or tattoos on character's skin. Those will most likely be impossible to duplicate and get right from various angles all of the time. This is especially important if you are working under strict deadlines. 
Some examples of characters with complicated designs include Sinbad from Magi, Goblin Slayer, and Dio Brando from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Some examples of characters with simple designs include Mob from Mob Psycho 100, Koro Sensei from Assassination Classroom, and Taiga from Toradora. My final tip is going to be don't fall in love with a single idea. Building on Vandal's point about iteration, you should test alternate versions of your character design. Don't marry the very first design you come up with. Good character design is all about experimentation. Maybe your character would look better with a different hairstyle or a completely different outfit. Consider getting a second opinion during this step as sometimes we cannot see what is missing in our own work. An example of a character whose design changed drastically from planning to the final draft is Deku from My Hero Academia. In the original version, Kohei designed Deku with a completely different color palette and hairstyle. My last thoughts on character design are really it's not easy to design a character. Take your time, be original, have fun, and in that, don't lose sight of your end goal. It's like, don't worry about what anybody else is doing. If you have a goal for your design and your ideas, just see that through and you'll definitely break the mold with time and hard work. I'd love to see any of your artwork and how your designs came about or whatever you're thinking, you know, just hit me up. But yeah, if you're interested in sending me any of your work, again, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Vandal Marchin. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment down below telling us about your favorite character design in comics, manga, video games, or anime. Remember, you can read my published Saturday AM manga series, Change the World, at pilotmanga.com. Saturday AM physical graphic novels are also now available for pre-order, so head on over to your favorite bookstore's website and support the world's most diverse manga brand. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks again to Monitor Comics for this opportunity. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.